guys, what's going on? For this project, I wanted to show you guys how I made this conference table for a great client of mine. So this is what it looks like all finished. Okay, so I made the table base out of steel tubing and uh, it's just a double triangle design. And I made the top out of ash. And here's the uh, table top glued up. All the boards cut and glued up and ready for flattening. And so now I am working with a seven inch angle grinder and uh, with a, a sanding pad, a backer pad with a 80 grit sanding disc. And I like to use this method for, you know, especially whenever I don't use biscuits or, and I don't have a domino. Um, so if I, if I use biscuits, um, you know, it's a little bit easier, but um, a couple of the boards were twisted pretty good. So I just did it this method and used the, uh, used the angle grinder and my planer, take down all the high spots. Um, I actually come back with 150 grit on the uh, angle grinder too and just knock it down a little bit smoother after I use the planer. Um, So we'll just flip it around and do the other side. Of course, there's no need to show you that because we've already seen what I do. And so now we're just gonna square up one end. And I use this door board. Um, I really like that. It's a cheap alternative to a track saw. I do not have a track saw yet. And um, so this works just fine though. And so on the other end, it's gonna get an arch, so I'm laying that out. I get the very center laid out for the full length that it needs to be, and then I've got the two ends at where they need to be, and I use this piece of um, eighth inch plywood, I'm just kind of cutting a little like one inch strip or whatever, and I just use it to, <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. I just use it to uh, to get my, my arch about the about where I want it and then I have my brother Greg come back and and draw the line for me there are other ways to do that but he was there to help so I used this one so now I'm just going to use the jigsaw and rough it out with the jigsaw I get it pretty close to the line um, but I'm not looking for absolute perfect right here but because I'm going to come back with the belt sander and I'm going to take the belt sander I think I've got 60 grit on the belt sander right now, maybe 80, but um, I'm just gonna get it nice and smooth with the belt sander, clean it up. I'm really just concerned with the top edge on this because I'm gonna use a chamfer bit and chamfer the bottom edge. And so I'm hogging away the majority of the material here with this chamfer bit. It's actually a 60 degree chamfer feels really good. Um, it's not nearly as drastic as a 45 degree and uh, it looks really, really cool too. So this is the bottom edge. We're just chamfering around. I'm hogging away the majority of that pass. And then I'm just gonna look and see how much how much more down I need to go for the, for the second pass to so just kind of clean it up. And so this is the cleanup pass. I'm gonna flip it back over. Put an eighth inch round over around the whole thing on the top so it feels nice and smooth. Now this is a conference table so we want it to be you know nice and smooth and easy to kind of rest your arms on and stuff like that. So now I'm just kind of thinking okay what do I need to do next? What do I need to do next? So I think I've just decided, okay, let's take it and move it to the next room and just kind of get it out of the way because it's time to work on the base. Now I'm laying out the base on this piece of cardboard. Um, and here I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't like the way that looks. So I'm gonna redo that, configure my, my angles. And I'm going to cut it all out with a with a box knife and a straight edge, and get all my individual pieces. So, what you see there represents the square tubing. So each individual piece I will cut out on and 
the square tube. So I'm just gonna clean that up with some mineral spirits and some denatured alcohol. Um, I like to get the majority of the oil off with mineral spirits and then just clean off the mineral spirits with denatured alcohol. I know there's other ways, but that's just what I had on hand. I'm gonna use a soap stick and lay out my templates. And then start cutting them out. You use a bandsaw, uh, portable, portable bandsaw. And um, I got this bandsaw at Harbor Freight. I like it, it works well. Um, a couple of the angles were a little too sharp to, for the bandsaw to, to reach, so I had to use the angle grinder. And then I decided to try using my little jig that I made to mount the bandsaw on the, on the wall, and it actually worked out pretty well. I think that was probably my favorite method of cutting these. And back to the bandsaw handheld, and then this happens. Oh, dang. dang it, dang it, dang it. Now what? And I'm just like, darn it. Can't even get it out of there, it won't even come out. I had to turn the wheel, and uh, I'll turn the wheel. I started turning the wheel, and it finally popped out of there. I was like, man, I didn't have very much more cuts to make. I didn't have very many more cuts, cuts to make. But I did have a cutoff wheel and an angle grinder, so I just did it the old-fashioned way. Just finishing up making my cuts. And now it's time to start welding everything together. So I don't have a very good welder and I'm not technically a welder. I've never been trained in it. I mean, I've, you know, I've had a couple guys show me what to do, but uh, I got this welder at Harbor Freight. It's just one of the cheap flux core welders, like 110 bucks or something, 120 bucks. It's the uh, 110 volt flux core. Um, and it, it does the job, it do, definitely does the job. I think I can weld up to a quarter inch or something like that, which is fine, I mean, especially for what I do. But um, it just doesn't make the prettiest welds. Um, so I end up welding and I, I get better every time I do it. This is probably my third welding project and each time I do it, I get better. But um, I still have a lot of grinding that needs to be done because those flux core well, they're just ugly. Here's a good example of it right here. Just a lot of spatter everywhere. You can clean it off and see the weld is okay, but the, the spatter is just everywhere. So, just doing all this. Now, at this point, I had painted the base. I had it all welded up, and I painted it, and I, and I liked it, but it needed more lateral support. So, that's what those two um, round pipes were for. So I'm going to use those to give more lateral support and it actually really needed it and it and it was perfect. It was exactly what was needed and it worked great. And I was I was concerned when I you know when I was laying the whole thing out that it would take away from the design but it didn't take away from the design. It actually it looks great so And now I'm just gonna stain the top. The top is ready. I've got the base painted completely now. The top needs to be stained and it's ready to shoot with lacquer. I like to use Kelly Moore's lacquer, the pre-catalyzed lacquer. Um, whenever I'm doing tabletops, it just, it dries super fast. It's easy to get like a really good protective sheen. And um, I ended up using uh, English chestnut on this table and it looked great. And um, here we are. You can see it's got the, the shine to it now. And it's uh, we're just installing it in the office now and get it all lined up and measured where it needs to be. And I just, I had some holes drilled in the, in the base and I'm just mounting it with some screws, some uh, inch and a quarter screws. Well guys, I appreciate you guys watching. 
And um, thank you so much for hitting the subscribe button. If you guys like it, please hit the like button. Also, share it. Share it with your friends. Um, if you haven't yet, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on Facebook. Um, both of those are Strat Creations. And also, check out, check out our uh, website, stratcreations.com. This build was a lot of fun. Um, there's more for this room coming up in a future build. And um, I just appreciate it, guys. Thanks a lot. We will see you on the next one.